guys, it's me again, coming to you about Kratom. Uh, so the day is the 14th, and it's the day after the Kratom March. Um, I've done a live broadcast on my Facebook um, of me doing various activities during the day after I've dosed with my Kratom. Um, one being, uh, you know, driving to the gym, working out, then going to clean my car, then going to the bank, and then eventually driving myself back home, um, which I all successfully completed without any issues. Um, my last time dosing was around like 11 o'clock, and it's now 2.07. Um, normally on a typical day back a couple months ago when I was on big pharma drugs, um, I probably would have taken at least three to four Vicodin by this time. Um, probably something for my migraines like Furacid or Barbiturol or Sumatran, um, as well as Ibuprofen. And I'd still be in bed right now at two o'clock, like barely, you know, functional. Or maybe I could stand for like five minutes, but I'd be really dizzy and groggy. And I certainly wouldn't have gotten out of the house at, you know, 11 o'clock. Um, I wouldn't even be dressed before 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon um, back when I was on prescription pills. I was just totally non-functional. I think that uh, Susan Ash said it the best when she said that um, it's been life kind of interrupted because I feel like I have to spend all of my time making videos and posting and contacting people and I've really kind of let the housework and other errands and other things just kind of drop off the table because um, I know that if this band goes through um, I'm not gonna be able to wash dishes again I'm not gonna be able to do any of these like even simple basic things that people do as part of everyday life so to me it's like I don't know what to do like part of me is like well maybe I should just clean the house because it's the last time I'm gonna be able to clean the whole thing and um, you know try to savor every minute that I have because I've only got like 15 days left that I can stand on my feet and and what do I do should I be like out with my friends and and trying to enjoy my last 15 days or should I be like fighting tooth and nail for those last 15 days and I, I'm not really sure what the answer is to that I, I mean I don't know at one hand, I want to enjoy whatever time I have left because for all I know, this is literally going to be the last 15 days I can stand for the rest of my life. Now, the DEA said something to the effect of, well, this ban is only effective for two years. Well, that's not that long. Um, yes, it is. It is that long for millions of chronic pain patients across the country who have spent either 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, or 20 plus years um, trying all kinds of pharmaceutical medication that did not work, that made them more sick, and they finally find this Kratom, and then you're going to take it away. And while you say two years, um, you know, marijuana was supposed to be emergency scheduled for two years, and 30-something years later, it's still a Schedule One drug. So I have little to no faith that this ban will only be for two years. They're saying that now, but they'll find some way of extending it and not letting people do research on the plant so they can, you know, keep telling their lies and spreading, uh, you know, propaganda and, and stories that aren't even true or telling half truths. Um, and we'll never get our kratom back. So, for all I know, this could literally be like the last 15 days I have of my life. I mean, living in bed, confined to bed, is not a life. It's just not something that, it's not even existing. I mean, I, I really don't know. I, I want to say that I'm going to be strong and, and that I'll get through this, but honestly, I really don't know. I mean, suicide is, is definitely something that I will be thinking about again once this ban goes through and I'm unable to use Kratom because... I cannot go back to the prescription drugs that were nearly killing me. I can't deal with another two years of over-medicating and doctor mistakes and doctors not caring and having no income. You know what? Yeah, sure. If you want to ban Kratom for two years, DEA, sure. Why don't you pay every chronically ill person that can no longer work for two years? 
automatically put them right on disability, approved, no questions asked. Sure, I'll take that. If you're going to pay my bills so I can eat and live for the next two years, sure, go ahead and do what you want. I'll stay in bed, but I'm not going to be uh, destitute. I'm not going to starve. You know what I mean? That's not right. And I'm sure you're not willing to pay the consequences. You're not going to pay these people. You're not going to help them get on disability. You're just going to leave all these people uh, destitute and homeless and it's having suicides and, and overdosing on the street. And, and it's just going to be a disaster. It really is. And you're just going to step back and turn your head and pretend like you don't see what's going on. I know how that is. You made the decision and now you're just going to turn your head when the consequences of the decision start to roll in. When people start committing suicide and disability applications go skyrocketing and welfare goes skyrocketing, where will you be? Well, you're not going to be there. You're not going to take responsibility for what's going on. Two years is a long time. I was in that bed for nine months, and let me tell you, nine months straight of not being able to move is like torture. I wouldn't wish what I went through on the prisoners in Guantanamo Bay. I would not. That's how bad it was. I can't describe the pain. I can't describe the suffering, but it is indescribable, unmeasurable agony every day, all day. There's just no possible way for me to, to drill it into your head that two years, one day is too much to be in that kind of pain. After I've suffered all this time and been through all these specialists and have tried all these medications, I deserve to have some type of quality of life and some dignity and you should not be able to take it away from me for bullshit reasons and from everybody else for bullshit reasons. 600 calls to a poison control center is a joke. Telling people that have, people have died from Kratom when they died from having fentanyl, methadone, and other prescription drugs that kill 100,000 people every year in their system and blaming on the Kratom is bullshit. That's what it is. It's just bullshit. And it shouldn't be happening. You're taking away our constitutional rights. We have no quality of life, and it's ridiculous. And I don't, I don't know what to say anymore. I mean, I've been spending all my time doing this. I'm not cleaning my house. I was going to start looking for a job, but that seems kind of, you know, stupid now. Um, by the time I got hired anywhere, you know, by the time I got well enough to go look for another job, um, I had maybe a week in between before I got this notice about my plant being banned. So now what? Um, I go get hired somewhere and work a week for what? And then I can't move and you know, I get penalized from disability? That doesn't make any sense. And then what am I supposed to tell disability? Well, I was getting better, but then they took away my plant, so now I'm bedridden again. Um, I know that before, even when I was bedridden and I was vomiting every day and I couldn't stand, you told me that I could stand for six hours and lift 30 pounds. So, you know, you're not going to be sympathetic to my case. I know that. I mean, nobody cares about sick people in this country. We just get put, you know, we're a, a minority and a victimized group, and we just get put back in a corner and everybody forgets about us. You know, a lot of people that are sick, you know, we're laying in bed. We can't get up and fight. We can't go to rallies. We can't go to D.C. Um, you know what I mean? We're too weak. We haven't slept. We haven't ate. We can't hold down food. So it's very difficult for this population of people to get any justice or anything because we're sick. And they take advantage of that. They're turning sick people into criminals in this country. We have never done anything wrong. We are tax-abiding uh, citizens. We're law-abiding citizens. We work. We take care of our kids. Why should that be a crime? Should it be a crime just to live, just to survive? It's going to be a crime that I can walk? Are you serious? You're taking away my ability to walk? Not just to work, but to walk to stand, to move, to eat, to sleep. You're taking away basically every ability a human has when you're taking away this plant from me and thousands of other people. It, it's inhumane. I, I can't believe that this is the country called America. I'm, I, I feel like I'm in a third world country here. I, I mean, I never pictured this happening in America. And until I became chronically ill, um, 
I used to think we had a pretty good medical system and a pretty good health care system. And, you know, there was always this SSDI, you know, if you were disabled, you know, you could go on disability. But, of course, when I actually got sick and had to start going to these doctors and, you know, applying for disability, it was a totally different story than, like, you know, what they, um, you know, what the senators and Congress and everybody likes to advertise. Oh, we have this nice program for the homeless. We have this nice program for domestic violence program. We have this program, but then when you call up these programs, oh, sorry, we're out of money. Oh, sorry, call this one. Oh, sorry, that one's closed. There is no program. There is no help. You apply for disability, and you get a letter back telling you that you can run a marathon, and you better get your ass back to work. And then, you know, a year later, you're still lying in bed, and you get another letter that basically says the same exact thing. Get off your lazy ass and go back to work, you bum. And then you get another letter six months from then. Get off your lazy ass and work. You're sitting there throwing up. You can't even stand. I was like, I called up this SSI worker and I was like, lady, I was like, I would love to work. I said, why don't you come to my house? Pick me up. You can drop me off at whatever job you want. And I guarantee you, as soon as you put me down in whatever spot you do, because I can't drive. I can't move. So you're going to have to come here. You're going to have to literally get me dressed. You're going to have to lift me up. You're going to have to put me in your car. You're going to have to carry me into the building. And then when you get there and you let go of me, I am going to fall onto the floor. How can I work like that? That is how I am every day, pretty much all day. How on earth am I supposed to go to work? I would love to go to work. I was going to go back to work. But now, thanks to this, I can't go back to work. I mean, I can't believe it. After all this time, I finally found a way to go back to work and be a productive citizen and maybe even go back to law school. And now my whole life is shattered again. You know, I mean, I was just so depressed and destitute and everything, you know, before um, I found Kratom. And then it's just it's unfathomable to think that this is going to happen and I'm going to be put back in that hellhole of a bed again.